What studio monitors should you buy? So if you're just a beginner producer and you're setting up your home studio and you don't know what to, what to get, this video is for you. It can also be good for you if you're more of an intermediate producer and you're trying to upgrade your studio um, and you're looking to spend a bit more. What can you go for for the next step to um, even kind of get more out of the quality of your music? There are a few things to consider when you're going to go out and buy studio monitors and I want to break this video down to four different sections. So the first section would be price and the second section would be size. Third section would be the purpose of your studio monitors and then the fourth section would be environment. So let's go through each of those and then at the end of the video you should have a better understanding of what you should go out and get for your studio monitors in your studio. I will also give you a couple recommendations of my own. I'll, I'll talk about what I use in my studio speaker wise and then what I have used in the past and I'll just give a couple of recommendations and we'll leave a couple of links in the description for, for you to go check those out. So let's get into the first section which is price. And price does matter. Uh, usually just like anything, lower the price, usually means lower the quality higher the price usually means higher the quality the same thing goes for studio monitors they can range from fifty dollars to fifteen thousand dollars so if it's your first time making a home studio i wouldn't go and spend fifteen thousand dollars because you it's just way too much. But um, price for your first pair of studio monitors, I would invest if you're in this for the long run, I would invest upwards of $200 if you can afford that. If you can't, there's always adjustments to be made. You could even probably buy a pair of good used studio monitors. If you look on your local classified sections, you can probably get a pair of used ones. But if you can afford that 200 to 500 range, you're going to get a really good quality set of speakers in that range anything over that i wouldn't spend right away until you have the ear to actually know what you're listening to in those expensive type of speakers and price will kind of go in will matter when we talk about more of these topics below so that's price your first one spend between 200 and 500 dollars if you can in that range obviously you can go lower and you can go higher but i would kind of that sweet spot is is in the two to five range the next section is size so size does matter when it comes to speakers and it really will depend on your environment so the and when it comes to size, a smaller speaker will just usually mean smaller wattage and a smaller amount of power, which means it's not going to be as loud. A bigger speaker is going to sound louder. So that's, you can think of size like that. Smaller, less loud, bigger, more loud. So if you are in, if your new home studio is a tiny room, you're not going to want a huge set of speakers because it's just going to be too overpowering for the room. So you can kind of measure your the size of the speakers based off the size of your room in a way. If you just have a small room, don't worry about getting a massive set of speakers. I know like a huge set of speakers looks cool and it's like great to Instagram those photos, but you don't want to get a huge pair of speakers if your room is too small. You kind of have to match your environment with the size of speakers. A little bit deeper on that, when you have more, when the amp is bigger, the speaker is bigger, it usually means more power, but when you have more power, usually, and not usually, you will get more detail out of your mix um, because music requires power to listen to the fine details, the transients of the sound. So if you have a, a speaker that's small, like like a really small speaker, it's not going to give you all the same details you would having a big speaker that you can hear a, the whole spectrum of sound, but also the real details of every little specific element within your mix. So if you have a small room, likely any type of bedroom size speaker, you can go for anything. And I will make some recommendations at the end. They'll work for kind of bedroom style uh, speakers. So I'll just say that to the end. You can check out my recommendations. They'll work for a bedroom studio. The third topic is environment. So this does come back to size and price as well, because it depends on how big your environment is, right? But what I want to touch on environment is, let's say you are going to actually buy your speakers, you know the size and you know the price. Okay, so you go to the music store, you listen to them, sounds awesome in the music store, right? That's likely because they have a sound uh, acoustically treated room in the music store for you to listen to it. You're all pumped up, you maybe listen to one of your songs, you bring it back into your room, you listen to it and you're like, this sounds bad or this sounds terrible so um that's okay 
your room, if that happens, your it's because your room is not acoustically treated yet. So your environment will actually make your speakers sound good or bad. Um, it's not totally up to the speakers. You have to work with in your room. So you can uh, do some small things to make your room sound better. Um, I'm going to mention two of them. One is you can actually uh, do, you can buy some software that can EQ your speakers a little bit that will take away the muddiness of your room. And I'll leave a link in the description. I can't remember the name of one right now, but you can like buy this microphone and test the sound of your room. And then you can kind of attach that software to your DAW and then it's going to provide a bit of an EQ for your speakers to run through. So that's the first thing you can do if you want. The second thing is you can acoustically treat your room for a small investment. You can buy acoustically treat like foam. You might have you might have seen like black foam before. You can do, get that. You can go and get like really great acoustic treatment that Acoustic treatment is expensive, which is why I'm saying you can go for the black foam, which is not that expensive. You can get it on Amazon. Um, so if you get that, where do you put it, right? Do you just put it everywhere? No, don't put it everywhere because you don't want your room to sound too dry. You want your speakers to be, you know, angled like an equilateral triangle to you, equal distance. And then you, you want to cover up the corners because that's going to be like bass traps and it can sound really boomy there for your bass to kind of bounce off and just get really muddy there. So have some black foam that's angled in the corners and then lay some black foam or any type of acoustic treatment stuff um, behind you and then on, on the wall in front of the speakers because the sound is going to come out, bounce and just bounce everywhere, right? You can, if you try to visualize the sound, it's going to be bouncing everywhere in your room. So you kind of want to have the foam to soak up some of that bounciness just so it's not booming everywhere and, and be bouncing. And that's what the music store has when you're listening to the speakers. So if you don't know, just ask them at the music store what you do, do to make this room sound so good and you can match it to your room. So keep that in mind when you bring the speakers back into your room. If they don't sound amazing right away, that's likely because your room isn't acoustically treated. So third thing is your environment and you will have to work with your room to make it sound good to match to this to the studio monitors that you buy. The fourth section is purpose. What do you need the studio monitors for? Um, are you a mixer? Are you a master? Er, are you a producer? Are you a songwriter? Are you using it for DJ? Are you using it just for listening? What is the purpose? Because it should come into your decision of what studio monitors you should buy. For example, if you're mixing, you all you're doing is mixing, you want a speaker and a monitor that is going to give you the raw sound. You don't want it to be altered. You want all the good and all the bad coming out of the speaker. On the other hand, some speakers, you know, shape the sound a little bit and provide like a lot of boost in the low end. So sometimes your mix can sound super awesome on the, on a set of speakers, but then you listen to it on you know on your phone or something else and you're like wow there's no low end anymore and my mix sounds terrible so if you are that's for if you're mixing right you really want a sound of 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 speakers that are going to give you the raw quality of the audio that you're making maybe you're producing music or you're just a songwriter maybe you want a bit a set of speakers that kind of add a bit of punch to your to your mix so it sounds better than it is maybe but to you, it's not so much of a concern because you're writing. You want to get into the vibe of writing a song and you're not worried too much about like the raw quality of the, of the mix. You can send that off to a mixing engineer and they'll work on that part. Or are you a DJ? Do you want like a lot of low end? It really depends on 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 what you're making music for. If you're an kind of you're an all all purpose producer, you're going to do a bit of producing, writing, mixing, mastering. That's what I do as well. And so what I would recommend is go go to it from like the most important part of listening to music which is you want it to sound good right so you need speakers that you can mix well on and get the really really good quality of the mix and then that will sound good on any other speakers that you you listen to the music on so what is the purpose of you listening to the music is it just for like hanging out and listening to if so then like maybe you don't even need studio monitors right but i i, I suggest i think you're probably here for studio monitors so what is your purpose this will depend on what type of studio monitors you should buy you made it to the end of the video and you want to know my recommendations a couple of recommendations this is not an exact exhaustive list at all it's just some speakers that i've had experience with over the past few years uh, making music the first one i recommend um and this is 
this is coming from the perspective of these four things. They're in the price range of 200 to 1,000. So I'm gonna give a broad range. Purpose is your kind of everything. You're producing, mixing, mastering, and in your, and songwriting uh, environment. Uh, you've acoustically treated your room a little bit. So you've, you've kind of done the bass traps which is important, which is what I'm talking about. And your environment is kind of a bedroom, small to medium bedroom studio. So maybe there's a window, but you have four walls. You can acoustically treat it. So that's the four things. Let's get into recommendations with that kind of context. So the first one is KRK Rockets. I have them here on Reverb.com. You can see they're about $400 Canadian. So if you're in Europe, that's going to be, you know, less expensive for you. And uh, these sound great. They are, um, one, they sound really good on the low end. So if you're making electronic music, I would say these are really, really good for that. Um, so that's one. The next one is the Yamaha HS8s. These are actually built off of what I use today uh, for mixing and producing. They, I have it right here. I unplugged it so I can show you. Okay, so these, these are the Yamaha NS10s. These are were built in the 70s, actually. They were made for listening to music, but then turned into like a studio speaker because they were so good that they gave you like the raw sound, what I was talking about. They made your actually song not sound very really good but it became popular because it didn't make your song sound good so once you could make your song sound good on this it would sound so good everywhere else so the yamaha hs8s are kind of like inspired by this this model they sound good i think if you're if you kind of want that speaker which was is what i was suggesting like if you make it sound good on this type of speaker and it will sound good ev good everywhere this is what i would recommend the yamaha hs8s i didn't mention this whole video probably shouldn't have kept it till now. The difference between active and passive monitors, and I just really skipped that because it doesn't really matter. The whole time I've really been talking about active monitors, which means like you get a set of speakers and you just plug it into your interface. Passive monitors are this monitor here. You have to connect that to an amplifier. Active monitors go directly to the interface. Passive monitors have uh, a middleman between your interface. So there's an amplifier here. So you kind of have to connect to the amplifier and that amplifier connects to your interface. So you need to power a passive monitor. Are passive monitors better than active monitors? Our active monitors better than the passive. Honestly, all these monitors are so good nowadays. I don't know the difference. Someone might tell you wrong, like a real audio file probably goes like the passive way because that's like how it was back in the day. I can't tell you if one's better than the other. I have both. You don't need both. I honestly just suggest going with active if you're just starting out, then you don't have to worry about amplifiers and getting right the right impedance matchup and amp matchup. So just don't worry about any of those terms. Go with active. Okay, let's move on to the third recommendation, which is the Atom A7. X studio monitors. You can see these are a little more expensive. They're $900 Canadian. Now we're getting into that range where maybe you're in the intermediate and you want to make another step to becoming pro. These could be a really, really good option for you. They also come in white, which is kind of cool if you want to vibe out your studio. Um, some people don't like the look of them. It's not about the look. I don't actually mind the look. I think it kind of looks cool and like from the future in a way. Great full stare, like frequency range, really good low end, really, really sharp high end. I think they get to 50,000 Hertz, which no one I don't think can even hear humanly. So maybe they just say that because no one can actually hear it, uh, but maybe they probably tested it or something. Anyways, tweeter is super high. So you get really, really solid detail there. That's another recommendation on the higher end. And the last recommendation, these little guys, they're the mixing cubes. Actually, they're called mixing cubes and they're kind of like crappy car speakers. So if you are mixing, you probably see these in a lot of studios they're like really they're only like this big and they fit in your desk and sometimes maybe some people only have one because they're listening to it they're mixing mono but you can get a really good solid image of your mix for like cars and iphones and stuff that doesn't have a lot of low end it makes your song sound not great because you take away all the fatness from the song but great for mixing if you want to get a really good image so you can kind of make it sound good on those all crappy set of speakers that you might your song might be listening to apple airpods too you know a lot of people listen to their music on apple airpods I I mean, I wonder if people even mix on like a set of AirPods. Like, is that a good idea? 90% of the world probably listens to your song on this. So I guess why not, why not just mix right on this? That's my recommendations with regards to those kind of things we went through. Um, hope this helped to give you more context to get a set of studio monitors. Let me know in the comments what kind of monitors you use. I'd love to know what you're working with and why. Why is it good? Um, what are you going to buy next? Thanks for watching, guys. And as always, I'll see you in the, the next video.